Buonasera a tutti, ecco la seconda puntata di Seminari Veterinari e oggi parleremo di astrovirus con ospiti importanti. Intanto abbiamo la nostra docente di malattie infettive Maria Laura Corrente che gestirà i nostri ospiti e farà da moderatrice. Intanto abbiamo la nostra docente di malattie infettive. Abbiamo il nostro professor Vito Martella, docente di malattie infettive presso l'Università di Bari. Facoltà di Medicina Veterinaria, oltre che componente del Consiglio Superiore di Sanità della quarta sezione. La professoressa Susana Wish dell'Università di Barcellona ci parlerà degli astrovirus insieme alla docente Simona De Grazia, docente di microbiologia e di microbiologia clinica dell'Università di Palermo. Io lascerei subito la parola alla professoressa Corrente ricordandovi che questo evento sarà in inglese, ma che sarà possibile fruire di sottotitoli e che se volete potete porre domande che saranno poi trasmesse in diretta ai nostri relatori. Prego. Grazie, thank you Dr. Zaccheo, ringrazio la dottoressa eh, Zaccheo per l'opportunità di aver, averci ospitato nella sua, nel suo mondo web dei seminari eh, veterinari. Uh, from the pandemic, uh, we are aware that uh, uh, the, these, the, the webinars are very important for students because we are not uh, at the university, but uh, in, in that way we can uh, teach, we can uh, continue to share information and uh, surprisingly it's easier to reach uh, a teacher from uh, Europe or the other side of the world. Uh, so I thank uh, Susanna, bienvenida Susanna, she's from Barcelona. E benvenuta anche a Simona De Grazia. Eh, la professoressa Simona De Grazia è già stata, per fortuna, quando ancora ci, le distanze non, non ci separavano presso la nostra università. Uh, Basically, I am an intruder here because uh, I am a bacteriologist, so I am very curious because to, to, in this evening uh, I'll go to uh, discover the other side of the moon. Unfortunately, in that period, this side is not, is not so good, it's uh, always it's quite dark. Uh, but uh, let me introduce uh, Vito Martella. Vito is a colleague of mine and also a very good friend and uh, a, a virologist deeply involved in uh, the, studi the study of uh, animal disease, uh, viral, viral, uh, viruses of uh, humans and animals. So I can say that Vito is a one health man. And uh, thank you, Vito. Uh, I suppose that Vito will introduce better than me, Susanna and Simona, and uh, her presentation. Thank you, Maria Laura. Thank you for your nice presentation. And of course, I wanted to take uh, some, uh, some minutes to, to introduce also Maria Laura. Maria Laura is a, a colleague, uh, is a friend. She's a coordinator of the, um, the teaching course in uh, Scienze Animali. Uh, in, uh, in Bari, the University of Bari, and uh, she's uh, helping uh, uh, me and helping us, uh, the Department of Veterinary Medicine, to organize uh, seminars and events. She's a microbiologist, she's a bacteriologist, basically, but she has uh, so many interests, so I can say this is uh, uh, reductive <laughs> as a presentation. Anyway, uh, with us today, we have uh, uh, Susana, Susana Guish, and uh, Simona De Grazia. Susana is uh, uh, a virologist, and uh, she is from the Universitat de Barcelona, um, Spain. She is a professor of microbiology, and uh, I, have, uh, I must admit, I've, I've been following her research studies with uh, um, great interest over the years because uh, um, she's part of a, a prominent group uh, working on enteric viruses in, um, uh, with uh, um, global uh, um, relevance, European relevance. They are, um, the group of Susan has been working on gui gui guidelines for food microbiology, uh, European guidelines, and um, they have uh, um, done a lot of out outstanding research as for uh, uh, enteric viruses. And uh, in recent years, they have been working on uh, um, um, human astrovirus, uh, in, in 
chiefly on uh, atypical human astroviruses. And this is the topic of our meeting today. We are talking about uh, animal-like uh, astroviruses. And so it is a pleasure for me to, to introduce to you uh, Susanna. And um, uh, along with uh, Susanna today, we also have uh, Simona De Grazia. Simona is a, a dear friend uh, of mine. She's uh, uh, also a professor of microbiology, and uh, she's from the University of Palermo. Uh, and uh, also she has been working on enteric viruses for, uh, uh, <laughs> I think, all, all the career long. And uh, uh, we have done a lot of uh, um, small projects, uh, research studies, and, uh, um, and also we had uh, a lot of uh, nice moments in meetings and congress. And uh, our common interest is uh, our enteric viruses. So um, I think that uh, this is, um, you, you understood that this is the, the, the topic that is driving us today. And so Simona, um, I will, uh, will talk after uh, Susanna. So the, now it's time to, to leave, uh, to, to give the, um, um, to, to listen to Susanna talk with attention. Um, Susanna, can you, um, can you, are you ready? Yes, <laughs> I can share my screen. Okay. Okay, so now my presentation is up and running. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, shall I start? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so thank you and good afternoon to everybody. I wanted to thank Vito and uh, all the other organizers for inviting me. Uh, it's also a great pleasure to talk on astroviruses because astroviruses sometimes are not uh, the main characters of the movies and are a little bit understudied and underrepresented sometimes in meetings. So it's a great opportunity to share some of the knowledge that we have been uh, collecting over the years on astroviruses. As uh, Vito said, I am working at the Faculty of Biology at the University of Barcelona, and I've been working on astrovirus for um, almost 20 years because I did my PhD working on astrovirus. I, I did the first epidemiological study on astroviruses in Spain. And since then, I've, I've kept working on enteric viruses in general, also hepatitis A virus and human norovirus. So today we are going to, I'm going to give you the first part of the seminar and the topic is going to be focused on uh, the novel human astroviruses that have been described recently and that are different from the classical astroviruses that were known since 1975. And it's uh, not still clear what's their role in human disease. So these animal-like astroviruses were discovered in 2008 in humans, in human samples, but today it is still difficult to associate them to uh, one, only one or a clear disease. So I'm going to give a brief introduction. I'm gonna talk a little bit on the astrovirus biology in general, and also, uh, I'm going to go over quickly on uh, what we know about the classical astroviruses, the ones that are clearly related to acute gastroenteritis. And then I will move on to talking about the novel astroviruses, the animal-like, their correlation with disease. And I'm also going to share some data on uh, what we know on the pathogenesis of these viruses, which is not... Uh, that much. <laughs> so astroviruses were uh, discovered in 1975, classical astroviruses, sorry, here. And they were observed under the electron microscope in feces from children uh, during an outbreak of gastroenteritis in a maternity ward in England. 
And they were named astroviruses because under the electron microscope, you could observe uh, like a six point uh, star like shape. And that's where the name came from. Since their discovery, there has been uh, eight serotypes of classical astroviruses that have been described, and all of them have been associated to acute gastroenteritis. So in 1981, uh, viruses could be propagated in cell culture for the first time, mainly on intestinal cell lines. In 1988, the first monoclonal antibodies against human astroviruses were developed. So this gave the opportunity to develop the first immunoassays to perform screening studies on clinical samples. In 1993, the first complete genome of uh, the first astrovirus was sequenced. Uh, and the astroviridae family was not established until 1995. Uh, in the sixth report of the International Committee of, Ta of Taxonomy of Viruses. In 1997, the first reverse genetic system was developed. So from this time, we were able to mutate the virus and introduce mutations in the viral genome and better understand the molecular uh, role of the proteins that are encoded by the genome. And there was a huge change in 2008, 2009, because the techniques uh, derived from next generation sequencing discovered and identified some astrovirus sequences which were completely different or genetically very distant to the classical human astroviruses as we knew them. They were um, described at the same time by, by two different research groups and they have been known as novel human astroviruses because they behave very different from the classical ones. And last, I want to mention that in 2011, the crystal structure of the capsid was developed and published. So it took <laughs> uh, many years to get uh, enough knowledge and advance in the knowledge of astroviridae. Today, we have known them for more than 40 years and we still maybe, I would say, we know less of us about astroviruses than what we know about SARS coronavirus 2, for example. And we have only known SARS coronavirus 2 for uh, five or six months. So astroviruses uh, uh, are a little bit understudied, but they are not uh, less important for that. So the family Astroviridae, it's a very large family. The viruses are non-enveloped. They are icosahedric viruses. They are small. The diameter is about 35 nanometers approximately. And the genome is a single-stranded positive sense RNA of about 7.5 kilobases. So they are considered enteric viruses. They replicate in the gastrointestinal tract and they are transmitted mainly through the fecal oral route from person to person, through contaminated water, food, or also when we uh, touch contaminated fomites. They traditionally, they have been regarded as important cause of gastroenteritis in human and also in other animal species. And especially gastroenteritis occur in young individuals. So in humans, gastroenteritis are uh, mainly associated to pediatric uh, cases. The family is very diverse and there's a high genetic diversity. There, the family contains viruses infecting more than 40 different animal species, including mammals and birds. And uh, although the viruses are mainly replicating in the gastrointestinal intestinal tract, there has also been extra intestinal infections including neurologic infections. These infections are uh, common in some animals infected by astroviruses, but they have also been reported in humans. So this has raised the uh, alarm or the importance of human astrovirus infections in humans, because some of the neurological infections that have been reported in humans have been fat fatal. So, Astroviruses, uh, it's one additional virus associated to gastroenteritis. 
uh, together with norovirus, rotavirus, adenovirus, sapovirus, and also some enteroviruses. But since uh, several years ago, we also uh, understand astroviruses as a cause of neurologic infections in certain individuals. Regarding the biology of the astroviruses, so as, as I said, it's a icosahedral cap capsid, sorry. <laughs> it contains uh, an RNA genome, single-stranded positive-strand RNA genome that is linked to a VPG protein at the five prime end. And the genome contains an, or encodes three open reading frames, open reading frame one, open reading frame 1A, 1B, and open reading frame 2. Open reading frame 1 encodes several non-structural proteins, and the most important is the viral protease, which when it's uh, synthesized, it uh, cleaves the polyprotein that has been synthesized from the genome. Open reading frame 1B encodes for the enzyme that is responsible for the genome replication, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And capsid proteins are expressed from open reading frame 2, which is um, also contained in subgenomic RNAs that are formed during viral replication. So uh, when the virus infects a cell, it binds to the receptor at the cellular membrane. The receptor for astroviruses has not been described and identified yet, but we think it's a carbohydrate molecule. The virus binds to the receptor and gets uh, inside the cells through clatrin-mediated endocytosis. And after that, the viral genome is encoded, encoded and since it's a positive strand RNA viruses, this genome can start being translated and expression of non-structural proteins are uh, synthesized. They are processed by the protease. The viral RNA polymerase, RNA dependent polymerase is expressed and starts replicating and copying the viral genome making single stranded negative strand and using this negative strand to synthesize new genomic positive scent, uh, strands and also molecules that are shorter, that only contain open reading frame 2 and which are called the subgenomic RNAs. These subgenomic RNAs are used to synthesize capsid proteins. So capsid proteins get uh, together, they are assembled and they form virions within the infected cells. Here on the right, you can see some uh, microscopes of virion capsids within the cytoplasm of infected cells close to the nucleus of the cell. So these capsids are immature when they formed and they need to get processed by some caspases, some uh, uh, cellular enzymes uh, to uh, evolve to uh, still immature virions that after it's released from the cell, it's uh, at the end, processed by trypsin and uh, generates mature infectious virions. So we believe that when the viruses uh, are released from the cell, they are still immature and the trypsin that it's uh, found in the gastrointestinal tract is responsible for the maturation of these particles to release their uh, complete infectivity. So let me share, let me talk about first on the classical human astroviruses. These viruses have been associated to acute gastroenteritis since they were discovered. Today, they are considered the third most common cause of viral gastroenteritis in, in humans, mainly in children, after rotavirus and norovirus. The prevalence, estimated prevalence of uh, Classical gastroenteritis is about 9.5% among outpatient children, children that are not hospitalized but that do suffer gastroenteritis, and a little bit lower, around 4% among hospitalized children. The uh, gastroenteritis is a little bit milder than the one described for rotavirus and noroviruses, and the incub incubation period of uh, uh, astrovirus gastroenteritis 
is uh, described a little bit longer than rotavirus and norovirus. Of course, the disease is uh, more severe and longer in immunocompromised individuals. So uh, it's easier today to detect classical human astrovirus genomes in feces, and sometimes the cases of uh, classical astroviruses are also positive for other enteric pathogens. So co-infections are frequent. And this makes a little bit more difficult to interpret the role of uh, astroviruses when we detect the genome of the virus in the feces of the children that are uh, sick. In addition, uh, asymptomatic infections have also been described for classical astroviruses, and they are thought to be also frequent. They have been reported up to 23% in children. And uh, as I said, there are eight serotypes of classical astroviruses that have been described so far. Serotype 1 is the most prevalent all over the world. And when we analyze data on antibodies uh, in people and seroprevalence studies are performed, we can see that 94% uh, of individuals that are tested are positive for antibodies against serotype 1. So this is the serotype that it's most prevalent all over the world. As I said, in 2008 or 2009, uh, two different groups, one at Washington University in St. Louis and also a different lab in California and San Francisco, they tested clinical samples from children with gastroenteritis that had not been diagnosed. And they used next generation sequencing to isolate new pathogens. And they came up with sequences that were very like, uh, very similar to the human astroviruses, the classical ones, but not so like, not so alike, not so similar. So they were described as novel astroviruses. The nomenclature of these novel astroviruses is a little bit, uh, can be a little bit confusing sometimes. And the classification, it's uh, also uh, updated once, uh, was updated several years ago. So astroviruses are classified into different genotype species. So classical human astroviruses, the eight serotypes that I was telling you about, they correspond to genotype species MAM astrovirus 1. There is another group of these novel astroviruses which are called MLB because they were first described in children from Melbourne in Australia. They, this MLB group of astroviruses corresponds to MAM astrovirus 6. There is also some other uh, two additional groups of astroviruses. One of them contains BA2, BA4. VA stands for Virginia in the US because that's also the place where some of these first samples were characterized. And uh, there is also a different group comprising VA1 and VA3, okay, with uh, sequences that are similar to VA2 and VA4, but genetically uh, different enough to be classified as a different genotype species. And there has been an additional VA5 uh, sequence, but the sequence of these viruses has not been completely sequenced. So this still stands as an unclassified virus. So we have three uh, or four main groups of viruses, the classical ones, then the MLB astroviruses and the VA astroviruses, which can be divided, subdivided in two different subgroups, VA4, VA2, and VA1, VA3. When we look at the uh, phylogenetic classification of these viruses, here we can see a phylogenetic tree with sequences from uh, uh, animal viruses, uh, uh, animal astroviruses. So the human astroviruses, the VA1, the VA group stands here, and it's genetically close to astroviruses that have been isolated in pigs, in minks, in uh, sheep, and also in bovines. So sometimes this group is also called human mink ovine, human astrovirus group. Okay, these are very uh, 
are closer genetically. And then we have the classical human astrovirus here, which contains mainly human sequences and also some feline sequences, which are very a little bit close. And then the MLB group, which is also apart from these other two groups of human viruses. And these MLD viruses, uh, the sequences from humans are uh, genetically not so close to any other animal astroviruses found and described so far. So these uh, animal-like or novel human astroviruses, they have been identified initially in feces of diarrheic uh, individuals. But then uh, with the years, they have also been identified in feces of healthy uh, people, non-diarrheic individuals. In addition to being detected in feces, these viruses, the novel ones, have also been identified sometimes in the central nervous system, mainly in the brain or in uh, cerebro, cerebrospinal fluid samples. They have also been identified and isolated from blood. And in some reports, they have also been isolated from the respiratory tract in nasopharyngeal swabs. As I said, these viruses, there are three main group of um, novel uh, human viruses, and they are different from the classical ones. Okay, here you can see that classical human astroviruses in open reading frame one, for example, only shares 32% amino acid identity with the MLB group. And this identity is even lower uh, when we analyze the VA viruses, okay? The open reading frame 1B, which encodes the RNA polymerase, is a little bit more conserved. So the amino acid identity is around 50, 54%. And the capsid region is again uh, much, much different. The identity between classic astroviruses, MLV, and VA, it's relatively low, around 20 or 27%. So I'm gonna. Uh, after this introduction, I'm going to go over some of the research that has been done to answer two main questions. And I'm going to show some of the data that uh, we have been generated in our lab on, on these topics. So first, I'm going to talk on the, sorry, the correlation with disease. So as, as I said before, it's not clear if novel human astroviruses are also associated with acute gastroenteritis and diarrhea. They were isolated in feces from children with diarrhea, but we can also detect them in healthy individuals. So their role in inducing uh, disease in the gastrointestinal tract is still controversial. They have also been isolated in the central nervous system. So, so there are reports which associate these viruses with meningitis and encephalitis. I'm going to talk about that. And also, as I said, they have also been associated to other uh, infection in other extraintestinal organs, mainly in the respiratory tract. And understanding uh, whether these viruses do correlate with disease is important because we need to optimize diagnostics at the clinical setting. This will help us to close the gap uh, in the diagnostic setting, better understand what are causing the, which pathogens are causing diseases. But also it's very important because by uh, performing a good diagnostic, we are going to prevent the use of inadequate treatments. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit also on data uh, referring to pathogenesis uh, studies. So what do we know? How do the virus cause disease? What do, uh, how do the virus damage the cells that he, it's infecting? I'm going to show some data on pathogenesis studies in the gastrointestinal tract and also the central nervous system. And uh, it's interesting to uh, perform these pathogenesis uh, characterization studies because uh, we need to understand what are the mechanisms of human astrovirus dissemination. So the virus enters the body through the oral route, but then it replicates in the gastrointestinal tract, but it's maybe disseminated to other organs. And it's critical to understand what's the mechanisms that the viruses use 
to disseminate and identify uh, what are the viral uh, molecular determinants that are essential for the virus to infect other cells different from the gastrointestinal tract, especially the cells from the central nervous system. So uh, pathogenous studies are important and significant because they will allow us in the future to identify treatments and uh, also to implement preventive measures that may help to reduce the burden of these infections. So let's see what we know about correlation with clinical disease. So novel astroviruses, they, they have been isolated in, uh, in, in every country, in every continent, in many different countries around the world. And you will hear Simona uh, in the seminar later today that will talk about the epidemiology of these viruses in, in Italy. And uh, the prevalence, the positivity rate of most of the epidemiological studies show uh, prevalences which are uh, relatively low, especially in, um, in children with acute gastroenteritis, okay? There is uh, one study that shows prevalences of up to 10% of MLB astroviruses in Japan, but in, in general, most of the prevalences that have been reported are uh, relatively low, but this is, uh, uh, there is no, to date, there is no easy and simple and robust uh, PCR method that allows uh, the detection and the diagnostic of all different human viruses that can uh, belong to the astrovirus. So diagnostics is a little bit difficult. Some of these data may be a little bit biased because not all of them have used a PCR that is able to detect all the viruses that, that we know now. And on the contrary, when we analyze seroprevalence data for MLB astroviruses in humans and also for the VA viruses, we can see that the seroprevalence is very is, is high, okay? Uh, in adults, about 100% of adults that are uh, analyzed have antibodies against MLB viruses. And also for VA, the seroprevalence in adult is also high, about 65%. So it seems that almost everybody, especially during childhood, is infected by these viruses and develop antibodies against them. So this indicates that the infections are prevalent and that are common, okay? In our lab, we did the first uh, epidemiological study to see whether uh, novel human astroviruses were also circulating among the Spanish population. And we analyzed stool, sorry, stool samples from uh, children which had uh, acute gastroenteritis, but which were undiagnosed. And we tested these samples for by real-time PCR for novel human noroviruses, but also for other such as adenovirus, rotavirus, sapovirus, classical human astrovirus, and also norovirus. It was uh, in our results, we found that 57% uh, of samples contained at least one of these uh, viral genomes. So this is a relatively high proportion of positivity rate for enteric viruses in this population. Novel astroviruses were detected in 10% of these samples of children with acute gastroenteritis that were not hospitalized, okay, and that uh, were uh, lo lo uh, younger than five years of age. Positive samples were more common in children under two years of age, and it was also um, remarkable that more than half, more than 60% of ML, uh, novel human astrovirus stool samples were also positive for other viruses. Okay, so uh, this makes it difficult to associate the presence, the occurrence of a novel human astrovirus genome in the feces of a sick child with the disease. If we detect, in addition to the novel human astroviruses, we detect one, two, or three 
other viral genomes, it is very difficult to know for sure that the gastroenteritis has been caused by the novel human astrovirus infection. There, are, there have been uh, very few case control studies in humans that would allow to confirm the uh, relationship between novel astrovirus infection and diarrhea. Okay, uh, a first study in 2011 did not find any uh, correlation between MLB1 and diarrhea, while uh, there was a second study published a little bit later which did find an association for MLB1 and diarrhea, but not for other uh, MLB viruses or VA viruses. Okay, so the data was uh, in the literature was not clear and was a little bit conflicting. We performed a case control study in, in Spain as well to uh, analyze uh, the situation in our country and our results. So we tested 370, uh, 363 uh, samples from children from, with gastroenteritis and 200 uh, control children. And we did not find any association uh, between novel astroviruses, nor MLB, nor VA, with the occurrence of acute gastroenteritis in children in our uh, study. And in addition, we also observed that when we quantify the viral titers in, uh, in stool from these children, the titers, at least for MLB, were higher in control, healthy children than in uh, diarrheic individuals. Okay. We also sequenced some of the viruses from asymptomatic and symptomatic children. Sequences were not 100% identical, but they were very, very similar. Okay. And then we also, in this study, we tried to identify risk factors that could uh, indicate a higher risk of a novel human astrovirus infection. And we did not find any uh, uh, factor clearly associated with the occurrence of novel human astrovirus infection. We tested for age and gender, for the uh, previous breastfeeding in children, whether they had been vaccinated for rotavirus or they had not, if they had uh, taken antibiotic treatments in the four weeks previous to the sample collection, if they had respiratory infection or fever in the four weeks between the before the sample collection, if they had uh, siblings at home, if they went to school, or if they had a domestic pet at home. None of these factors correlated with the uh, higher risk of novel human astrovirus infection in our study. And as I said, when we analyzed the viral titer, the number of viral genome copies that can be detected in stool, for MLB, we observed that the titer was significantly higher in healthy control children as compared to the uh, children with gastroenteritis. And a previous uh, study had also uh, observed lower titers in children with, uh, with symptoms as compared to the children with, which did not have children. And in addition, when we compared the titers, so this, for example, is 10 to the 6 viral genomes per uh, ml of fecal suspension. When we compare these titers with the titers that have been described for the classical human astroviruses, we can uh, observe that the viral load for novel human astroviruses in feces, in general, it's lower than for classical human astroviruses. So here we have data for different serotypes of human astroviruses and titers are above 10 to the 10 viral genomes per gram of stool samples. So difference uh, is uh, striking and viral loads in children infected with classical human astroviruses are much higher than the viral loads that we are quantifying in children from infected with novel human astroviruses. So it seems overall that uh, the association between novel human astroviruses in humans and diarrhea and gastroenteritis is not clear, okay? They are present, they occur in stool, we can find them in the stool of children uh, frequently, but 
it seems that they are uh, not clearly associated with gastroenteritis. And as I said, uh, it's also been um, uh, important that uh, human astrovirus infections have also been associated with neurologic disease. Okay, so the virus enters through the uh, oral route, replicating the digestive tract, but somehow it uh, disseminates through the body uh, and through blood, it crosses the brain barrier and can infect the central nervous system. Okay, so there are many meningitis and encephalitis cases that uh, remain undiagnosed. Okay, uh, sometimes people receive treatments that are uh, performed without knowing which one is the etiological agent. So better understanding whether human astrovirus infections play a role as an etiological agent of these neurologic diseases is important because this would uh, at least prevent the use of inadequate, inadequate treatments okay, in, uh, in certain cases. Today, they have, there have been 10 case reports in humans of human astrovirus neurotropic infections. Here in this table, you can see the 10 reports that have been described and published so far. Most of them are associated to VA1 viruses, okay? Uh, but this is not just the case for VA1. We also have MLB1 and 2 viruses that have been associated to neurological uh, infections and also some classical human astrovirus serotype 1 and 4, which have also been isolated in samples from, child from individuals with uh, encephalitis or meningitis. Okay, most of these patients, they were immunocompromised. Some of them, they were patients who had received a hematopoietic stem cell uh, transplant. Okay, but not all of them were immunodeficient. There are some cases of infections also in uh, immunocompetent individuals, okay? And uh, in most of these uh, infections, the patients died, okay? So out of these uh, 10 reports, we can see that six of them ended up with a, a, a fatal uh, ending, okay? So uh, better understanding whether this type of infections are common among humans, it's very important and it's very essential. But the problem is that sometimes it's difficult to make the diagnostics in this type of uh, diseases and patients. Most of these diagnostics, they have been performed uh, post-mortem. The virus has been uh, isolated and detected in brain biopsies, which most of the times have been collected post-mortem, okay? And the titer, the viral titer in the brain biopsy is significantly higher than the titer that has been detected in some patients in stool, in blood, or also in cere and cere cerebrospinal fluid uh, specimens, okay? So it's difficult to uh, know which is the best clinical specimen that can be analyzed easily uh, and screen for a human astroviruses genomes to make the diagnostics. Even in some of the uh, case reports that have been published, the uh, brain biopsy was negative by real-time RT-PCR. The virus could only be detected where next-generation sequencing method was performed. So to translate this into a routine diagnostics at the hospitals is challenging because uh, uh, it's important to know which is the best uh, clinical specimen that should be analyzed, which is the best method and the clinical specimen that should be analyzed to get the chance to find and diagnose these human astrovirus infections. Okay, and so far there have been some uh, prevalent studies by real-time PCR to uh, screen for viral genomes in um, cerebral spinal fluid samples, but most of them they have generated negative results. So it's difficult to detect the virus in this type of samples. It's a challenge. And finally, the uh, novel human astroviruses have also been isolated 
and um, allegedly related and associated with infections in the upper respiratory tract. Okay, so respiratory symptoms are common in novel human astrovirus uh, positive cases. The viruses VA1 and MLB2, they have been isolated from nasopharyngeal swabs, okay, with children, uh, from children with acute respiratory diseases. The viral loads are significant, and, but the viruses uh, were not alone. In most of these reports, other enteric viruses and respiratory viruses had also been isolated in this type of samples. So there is a need to perform uh, proper uh, case control studies to better clarify and confirm the association of novel human astroviruses with upper respiratory disease as well. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna go a little bit into detail on what we know on the pathogenesis of these infections. So for classical astroviruses, it's been known for many, many years that despite the fact that the virus is replicating in the gastrointestinal tract, there are very, very few histopathological changes in the intestine of the infected individuals. And the inflammatory response that it's observed there is also very, very low. <clears throat> in addition, there have also been some uh, publications that have found that the capsid protein alone, only the proteins that uh, form the caps, the virions of the, of the viruses, they can act as an enterotoxin. So the capsid protein alone by itself is able to induce, may be able to induce diarrhea. And this has been confirmed in vivo uh, and in vitro and also in vivo, in vivo. The capsid protein has also been described to inhibit the complement system to block the, some uh, arms of the innate immune responses against the infection. Okay, and innate immune responses have also been uh, described to be essential to control the infection and control the disease, okay? And despite the, the changes uh, at the pathological level are, are not very low, some of the infections persist, uh, especially in immunocompromised individuals. Some of the infections have been detected, uh, some of the patients have shed the virus for long, very long periods of time. Here I'm showing uh, micrographs of uh, in human intestines of a patient that, wa that was infected with a classic human astrovirus infection, infection. So we can see that the virus targets mostly the enterocytes of the villi in the small intestine, okay? So the viruses, we know that uh, replicates in the enterocytes of the small intestine. We know that the capsid can cause diarrhea and the viral replication can cause diarrhea. Some studies have described that uh, in epithelial infected tissues, the tight junctions that are uh, closing the uh, intestinal barrier are destroyed. So this allows uh, the increase of intestinal barrier permeability. So some ions and water, and maybe also the virus can, uh, this may help the virus to get and cross the intestine uh, barrier and disseminate to other tissues. And also there has been some uh, studies that describe that the expression uh, and distribution in the cell of some of the ion transporters is also altered in infected cells. So this also explains how the virus can cause diarrhea. But this has been demonstrated for classical astroviruses, but uh, data regarding whether these same phenomena occur after novel human astrovirus infections uh, have not been performed yet, okay? So for novel human astroviruses, we have been able to propagate the viruses in cell culture uh, since for the last two or three years only. So VA1 can replicate in uh, many different 
cell lines from different origins, including intestinal cell lines, while MLB2 viral, MLB1 and 2, they cannot replicate in uh, intestinal cell lines, but they do replicate in cell lines from other tissues, such as hepatoma uh, cell lines and also respiratory cell lines. And the V8 has been demonstrated that it can also replicate in uh, cells that are that belong to the central nervous system. Uh, and it's also interesting to confirm that while, sorry, while uh, human astrovirus infections replicates in many different cell lines, but in all cases, trypsin is required to allow the maturation of the virions and to allow the propagation of infectivity for the novel viruses, both the VA and the MLB, uh, these viruses are not dependent on trypsin for infectivity. Okay, so this um, uh, suggests that they can maybe replicate in the gastrointestinal tract, but maybe they, they can disseminate easily to other tissues where we cannot find trypsin. And since they are not dependent on trypsin for the infectivity, they can also uh, replicate in these other cell types. We have, uh, uh, there, there, are, there is a group in the US who have also the, uh, studied whether novel human astroviruses can replicate in human intestinal enteroids. Sorry, these are uh, so from stem cells of intestinal biopsies. These stem cells are uh, obtained from a biopsy and they are cultivated, cultured uh, ex vivo. And these cells can be differentiated in what we call human intestinal enteroids. And these enteroids, they contain enterocytes and they also contain other cell types that are uh, typical from um, uh, the intestinal. Okay, so th this is the best model to study pathogenesis and to study which is the site of viral replication in vivo. So novel human astrovirus can replicate in these human intestinal enteroids and they not only infect enterocytes, they also infect other cell types. Okay, so uh, this has also been confirmed uh, using this uh, model of infection. And in our lab, we also uh, start, uh, developed a method to propagate MLB in the hepatoma and intestinal cells that I was telling you about. So we infected uh, these cell lines with uh, stool samples containing MLB viruses, and we were able to propagate the viruses in these cell cultures. They were not uh, being infective in CACO2 cells, which are the intestinal cells, but they do replicate in these other extra intestinal cell lines. And not only they can replicate, but also they, they can infect the cultures uh, in a persistent way. So we infect the cells and then we passage the cells and we split them. The cells can continue to divide and the virus stays within this uh, cultures. Okay, so we are able to detect the viruses in the supernation of these cultures after different and many different cell passages. Okay, so the virus is establishing a persistent infection in these cell cultures. Not all the cells in the culture are infected. Here in these immunofluorescent samples, you can see that about 10%, so this, these green uh, cells are the ones that are uh, expressing the MLB capsid proteins. About 10 or 20% of the cells are infected in the cultures, but not all of them. But when we trypsinize these cultures, the virus stays there and can persist uh, over time. These are some uh, micrographs of the viruses that are replicating inside these uh, cultures. There is some uh, cell damage in the infected cells. The nuclei of these cells is often uh, condensated and shows signs of uh, damage, but the culture keeps producing the virus. Some cells are surviving and the viruses is establishing a persistent infection. 
And finally, we also tested whether uh, these persistently infected cultures could be, uh, the, the infection could be removed by treating the cultures with interferon. Okay, so we added exogenous interferon in these cultures, uh, both on it the hepatoma cell line and the respiratory cell line infected persistently with MLB1 and MLB2. And we could see that interferon response, interferon uh, treatment is able to remove and clear the viral from the culture. Okay, so the viruses are sensitive to interferon. And this was uh, very clear in the hepatoma cell line but the interferon could not uh, clear the infection from the respiratory uh, cell line, okay? And uh, so it seems that the viruses can, the novel human astroviruses, they can replicate in many different cell types. And so somehow they can also establish persistent infections. Although we don't know if this is something that we only observe in cell culture or whether this is something that also happens in vivo, okay? There are very few models that allow the study of um, urine, uh, of astroviruses in animal models, okay? The turkeys were used as a model to study gastroenteritis for many, many years. And lately there has been the development of a uh, murine model that can be infected with uh, murine astroviruses. And this model uh, is very useful to understand how the infection develops and evolves uh, in vivo. Although, as I said, it's just a model that it's infected with a murine viruses that it's genetically different from novel human astroviruses. And it's also genetically different from other animal viruses, okay? But uh, despite the differences and the distance, okay, the murine model is being useful to understand how is uh, the infection happening in vivo. So when mice are infected with the murine astroviruses, we don't observe any disease, okay? And the uh, histopathological changes are also very, very low, very minimal, as we had observed for classical and in human astroviruses and novel astroviruses as well. There is viral shedding and depending on the, on the strain, this shedding can be uh, uh, positive for very, very long time. So some of the infections can be chronic and persistent. And there's also a lack of sustained immunity. So it seems that the murine astroviruses is replicating in the uh, gastrointestinal tract of these animals without giving any clinical signs and replication can persist for uh, long periods of time. And uh, so this raised up the question whether these uh, astroviruses could be part of the, of the virome of the viruses that may be infecting our, our cells or the cells of the animal without being associated to disease, just a commensal virus, okay? And this idea has been suggested by different uh, groups and there is some data that not only show that maybe astroviruses is part of the virome in these uh, animals, but that it may also be uh, beneficial for the individual to protect it against other uh, enteropathogens, the infection with other enteric pathogens. In mice, it has been shown that infection with murine astroviruses can protect them from rotavirus and norovirus infections. So when the intestine is infected with astroviruses, there is an expression of interferon lambda, and this protects this tissue from infection with rotavirus and, and norovirus, okay? And in using the same model, uh, it has also been recently shown that the virus replicates in the intestine of mice it replicates specifically in, in the cells that produce the mucus uh, in, the, in the tissue. And infection of these cells 
also induces an increase in mucus secretion and this protects the animals against infections and colonization by other uh, bacterial pathogens such as some enteropathogenic E. coli. Okay, so the occurrence of murine uh, astroviruses in the intestines of these animals is beneficial for them and it's protecting them or could protect them against infections by other viruses. Uh, and in relation to that, it has also been described in other animal uh, models and also in humans that uh, astrovirus infection uh, also uh, alters the microbiome diversity that it's uh, present in the intestine of the individuals. This has been described for human that have been infected with classical human astroviruses, but there's no data yet on uh, microbiome analysis in humans infected with novel human astroviruses, which, which may be a completely different story. This has also been uh, described in some uh, poultry species and also in bats, okay? As, as I said, there's still no data uh, on how novel astrovirus infections uh, alter the microbiome diversity. So um, these are what I was go I, I wanted to share with you today and I'm gonna go over a summary of the ideas that have been said during the talk and the take home messages that I think that may be important to, to help uh, design future experiments to keep answering some of the questions that are still uh, unanswered regarding novel animal-like uh, human viruses, okay? So first, it seems, although uh, more studies should be performed, it seems that unlike classical human astroviruses, the novel ones may not be a cause of acute gastroenteritis. They may be found in feces from children with gastroenteritis that may not be the cause of the disease. We have also seen that the viral loads in stool uh, of children are lower than for classical human astroviruses. The infections are common and seroprevalence data show that uh, most people get infected. We have also uh, seen that at least in vitro, it still uh, remains to be seen whether this happens in vivo as well. The novel human astrovirus, the MLB, may establish persistent infections in some cell lines that are not of an intestinal origin. Uh, so we ask the question whether novel human astroviruses are part of the intestinal virome in humans. Okay, uh, investigations on potential persistence uh, in humans could uncover uh, an immodul immunomodulatory role for human astrovirus infection when it's occurring in the in the gut of the individuals. But in some in some cases we are observing this dissemination and neuroinvasion. And this neuroinvasion of novel human astroviruses, this is a life-threatening infection, especially in immunocompromised hosts. So which understanding which viral factors may be determinant for this neurotropism and this ability to disseminate to central nervous system uh, cells or whether which host factors may be uh, also determinant to contribute to this ability of the virus to disseminate to the central nervous systems remain to be elucidated. And this would be very, very important at least to understand uh, which are the risks of these um, diseases to happen and whether we could find a way to prevent this uh, to dissemination to occur. Okay, so there are still a lot of uh, unanswered questions on astrovirus field uh, still. And I would like to end by thanking the, the enteric virus group that is uh, the people in the lab who has done most of the work that I have uh, shown you today. 
uh, the chief of the laboratory is Dr. Albert Bosk, but I also want to mention and give credit to Diem Lan Wu. She uh, is an MD from the university in Geneva, and she uh, spent three years in the lab doing her PhD, and most of the work that has been uh, shown today belongs to her PhD studies in, in Barcelona, so I want to give credit to her work today. And uh, that's the end. So if you have, I thank you for your attention, and uh, I've given a lot of information. If something is not clear, or if you want to make any other question or comment, you, I would be happy to try to answer them, but I think we are going to do that at the end of the seminar. Thank you very much, Susanna, for your excellent and comprehensive presentation. I get, got very impressed, uh, especially for the role of astrovirus in the microbiome, maybe in symbiosis with other organisms. Mm -hmm. um, now we can move to the next presentation by Simona De Grazia. Professor Simona De Grazia uh, will talk about uh, human astroviruses in Italy. Thank you, Simona. Forse devi attivare l'audio, Simona. Ok, now here I am, sorry, I was moved. Uh, thank you, I would like to thank uh, Vito uh, to give me the opportunity to speak about uh, human astroviruses and in particular I'm going to show you our data and our experience in uh, the study of genetic evolution of these viruses. As uh, Susanna told us, um, uh, astroviruses are known to be one of the most important agents of acute gastroenteritis in children. And I will focus my presentation of cl on classical human astroviruses that, uh, as you have just uh, listened, are a member of the MAM astrovirus genogru group 1, and in particular are classified into 1 to 8 serogenotypes. As uh, we have just uh, listened, uh, there are not many literature data about astroviruses. If you made a check, if you check the um, uh, human astrovirus on PubMed uh, Pub just today, you can see that there are less than 1,000 results on uh, publication since their, their um, first um, uh, observation is to samples. Even if about SARS coronavirus 2, there are more than 5,000. Uh, literature data. This is obviously done to the uh, very important epidemiological impact of uh, this infection, but it is uh, not true that we are just to study the, uh, this kind of viruses because it's very important to know the genetic evolution and the system by which viruses are involved in human infection uh, to understand better how to control and prevent this kind of infection. Our experience on, uh, on astrovirus is uh, a part of a very large and larger uh, experience we had on enteric viruses. As uh, in uh, the uh, virology laboratory of Palermo, there has been conducted an uh, interrupted uh, um, surveillance on enteric viruses, and in particular on rotaviruses since 1985. This obviously was for us a very important archival uh, collection of data on epidemiological information because allow us to study the evolutionary mechanism of this virus to change and maintain their high circulation into uh, children hospitalized um, with acute gastroenteritis. Uh, now I'll show you 
the data on the last 15 years of surveillance because in 2000 we start also to study other enteric viruses such as uh, noroviruses and in particular uh, noro and other astroviruses while we just have a look of the prevalent circulation of adenoviruses but we never studied their genetic uh, evolution obviously because they are DNA viruses differently from all the other viruses I just um, on, on which we are focused on. As you can see, um, rotavirus was the prevalent um, virus involved in uh, human gastroenteritis and our study are always on hospitalized children with acute gastroenteritis. It was followed by norovirus and finally we found um, the um, astrovirus involved also in this kind of infection. As Susanna told us, all these viruses share the same uh, the same transmission route. They can be transmitted by a oral fecal route, human to human, but they high um, stability into the environmental condition allow also to be to maintain the infection, their infectivity into uh, water or food that can be used as vehicles of infection and can allow an eye, an eye efficient transmission uh, to uh, humans. It's also important to remember that these viruses are also coll 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 associated with asymptomatic infection and that the uh, very long uh, shedding time with high viral load allow also a successful transmission of this virus and so to allow a, a high circulation into human population. We have also to remember that not just humans, but also uh, uh, agricultural animals, wild animals or water fools uh, can be infected by the viruses and this virus and uh, so the water contaminated can be uh, can be um, uh, improperly used uh, or drink by humans but also used uh, for uh, irrigation of vegeta vegetables or also to wash uh, fruit and, and vegetables so um, even if other viruses such as norovirus and hepatitis I, uh, A virus um, are, um, are very known to be uh, one of the most important foodborne and waterborne transmission uh, viruses, transmitted viruses. And astrovirus is just occasionally uh, found associated with this kind of transmission. The, in, the, in, the, in the literature are now available different uh, papers in which um, authors found uh, classical and uh, atypical astrovirus, so astrovirus of different genotypes in water samples, in fluvial water samples, but also in municipal water samples. And the important data is that the uh, viral load of classical astrovirus in these samples are usually very high, uh, quite similar to the norovirus uh, concentration. And so it um, has to be uh, better and further analyzed, obviously. Um, as we have just uh, listened, we know that the high risk population to astrovirus infection as are the, um, children, and in particular the, the young children, and, but also elderly and immunocompromised could be infected and could be uh, um, related to uh, with a symptomatic infection, which even is, is usually a mild gastroenteritis. Is a associated with um, watery diarrhea, uh, vomiting is usually less common respect to uh, rotavirus and norovirus, and as uh, also the incubation period of astrovirus infection is usually longer respect to the other enteric viruses. The direction of symptoms is uh, 
usually sort as so is associated with an acute gastroenteritis, but it's important to see that uh, um, in particular immunocompromised individuals, but also um, infected individuals can shed the uh, virus in, um, uh, in the environment for a very long uh, period. And this uh, is uh, really important uh, to um, uh, allow the circulation of such viruses. We have just seen that uh, uh, usually uh, young adults has uh, had antibody against classical uh, astroviruses. Uh, we know that um, usually in, um, in the human population, more than 90% of human population had antibody against um, the human astrovirus. But uh, looking at the age-related infection, it's possible to understand that this um, immune response can probably protect individuals from, from against the future, uh, future infection, but is not um, further known. It is not, it is not um, uh, known um, if uh, this immune response can protect against different genotypes or if uh, there could be a cross protection uh, by this immune response. So uh, further study could be um, absolutely necessary to understand better the rule of the immune response after an uh, astrovirus infection into human population. We have seen also that astrovirus uh, prevalence is, um, um, is very low in the population, but it's also uh, known that not many uh, studies are available on these viruses. And so probably this uh, prevalence of uh, um, circulation is underestimated. Um, maybe uh, the use of new uh, syndromic assay and the use of, of new um, uh, diagnostic assay will allow to um, improve the uh, detection of these viruses in the future. But actually the prevalence is amount uh, as, a, as, as a rate between less than one to a little bit more than 10%. And also another um, data is uh, that uh, the prevalence information are not always associated with a genotype uh, definition. And so when this data is available, it's possible to see that human astrovirus 1 is the prevalent genotype. We speak about genotype, but serotype and genotypes are, um, um, are identical in this case. And uh, astrovirus 1 is uh, um, sometimes followed by astrovirus 2 or astrovirus 8 in different geographical area, but we are uh, also sure that uh, the availability of more information on genotyping of, this, uh, uh, of these viruses with, will obvi obviously um, increase and improve uh, our knowledge about their circulation. So I am just moving on our, our data because the laboratory of Palermo is a, is a part of a network and in particular an astronet, which is a part of the project of the Italian study group of enteric viruses promoved by uh, Professor Martella. And uh, the object, um, the main aims of this project was to study altogether the, um, the epidemiological uh, um, uh, evidence on and data on these viruses and to understand altogether their rule and to share the diagnostic tools. Um, um, about uh, what we have done in Palermo, we study um, uh, just a sporadic case of children less than five years old hospitalized with acute gastroenteritis. And as you can see, the prevalence in our geographic area was um, uh, uh, very near similar to the one I showed the world. Uh, world worldwide. In fact, we had a prevalence rate between 0.5 to 6.6 .6 and an average prevalence of 3.4 of 
of a circulation. Um, about the seasonality of uh, the circulation of these viruses, we can see that differently from norovirus and rotavirus, for, from which it's possible to see a peak of circulation during the, the winter or during the spring, the circulation of astrovirus is with a low prevalence of circulation distributed um, uh, all, uh, during the all um, different months. This is uh, more um, clear in this graph in which it's possible to see that the circulation of astrovirus detection in our geographic area in the different year of surveillance is in, every year involve different uh, months. So there is not a clear seasonality of the circulation of this infection. Um, about the epidemiological surveillance, um, uh, more the ha than half of the strain detected were submitted to a phylogenetic analysis um, to understand which genotype was prevalent and how these uh, viruses uh, was going to change over the time. And in particular, we uh, used uh, the uh, of 2 sequence uh, coding for the capsid proteins uh, to to classify our uh, our strains as it was um, it is usually used uh, by all the laboratory um, involved in this kind of research. Our data show that uh, Astrovirus 1 was the prevalent uh, genotype followed by the Astrovirus 2. But another interesting data is that uh, inside each genotype is possible to differentiate different lineages and these different lineages uh, are uh, substituting uh, one and each, each other over the time. Um, this uh, is uh, uh, the, this um, classification of uh, astrovirus genotypes in different uh, lineages is uh, more clear in a phylogenetic tree in which you can see the Italian uh, astroviruses distributed into different lineages inside the different genotype detected over the time. But uh, um, we would uh, we want also to investigate why the astrovirus 1 genotype there was the prevalent genotype, not just in our geographic area, but worldwide. And uh, doing a, a meta-analysis about the data available in literature, it was possible to see that where was available a phylogenetic analysis of the astrovirus 1 detected over the time, was possible to see this uh, continuous substitution of different lineages over the time and uh, a similar uh, a similar characteristic in the evolution, the genetic evolution of viruses was observed also for other enteric viruses, such as the rotavirus, the rotavirus G1P8 that circulate was the prevalent one before the introduction of vaccine and allow the continuous emergence and re-emergence of lineages over the time, but also in the norovirus G2.4 where the different um, uh, variants um, uh, substituted um, and allow the uh, immune response in the host and so allow the um, successful uh, capability of the virus into uh, the infection uh, in, in, in humans. Um, about the evolutionary mechanism of uh, these viruses, we know that uh, astrovirus uh, such as uh, many other RNA viruses uh, are able to accumulate point mutation. We also made a study on uh, the structural um, uh, and on the capsid structure of the of the, these viruses and found different residues under positive selection, uh, which may be 
can allow to the immune response. But we also know that astrovirus can infect a very wide panels of animals, mammalian species and also avian species. And so it's also possible an interspecies transmission. And these host can be also um, um, can allow also a recombination event uh, uh, allowing the evolution of these viruses and um, uh, probably on the uh, recombination uh, capability of these viruses we made many studies in which was possible to demonstrate the origin of different lineages or different new strains of noroviruses originated by a recombination events or by an intergenotypes uh, recombination but also so between viruses of different genotypes but also by a recombination events which involved uh, different lineages of uh, astroviruses of the same genotypes. So I'm just moving, this is the last um, uh, slides, just to, um, uh, uh, just to move uh, to the future and so to understand what we can do in the future and uh, to, um, on, on which topics will be very important to investigate. Uh, and I put in, in, in the center the important to study the genetic evolution of viruses because this these form the basis of the, the capability of virus to, to, um, in, to um, 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 uh, protect um, from the immune response but uh, is uh, very important also to understand the, uh, the impact of, on this virus in, uh, in uh, the clinicians and uh, as I just told you the importance uh, to uh, understand how the epidemiological um, circulation uh, of this virus will change when uh, the use of syndromic panels will begin an, an, um, a, a daily um, uh, use um, in uh, the uh, diagnostic laboratory because uh, probably um, uh, most of infection will be uh, related to um, viruses which usually are not detected. And then I leave to you uh, many other aspects on which uh, we can investigate because the viroma but also the environmental sur surveillance and what uh, Vito will tell us about the extraintestinal disease will be also a very uh, important topics to investigate. So I will uh, uh, thank you for uh, your attention and I will give you the opportunity to make uh, questions. Thank you very much to Simona de Grazia, de Grazia for her interesting presentation but also for giving us the opportunity to share uh, her data. Uh, I think the students will be very happy to acquire them. And finally, we have to introduce Vito for the last presentation. The topic is the novel disease by astrovirus in animals. Thank you, Maria Laura. Can you see the, the presentation? No, no, at the moment, no. Okay, just uh, tell me when the, um, the presentation is on the screen. Not yet. Eh, quindi la presentazione non appare? Yeah. 
invito allora. di condividere la presentazione in un'altra finestra. E... Sì, riprovo, riprovo. Sì, devi... Nel frattempo se ci sono delle domande possiamo anche trasmettere. Allora, eh, devo condividere... Share screen. Meglio della presentazione. Strano perché prima abbiamo fatto, se io faccio meglio, se io faccio share screen. Ehm, allora. Dice il tuo intero schermo, la finestra di applicazione. Ah, forse vado qua. Eh, provo, eh, eh, Daniele, dimmi se si vede la, la schermata. Si vede adesso? Adesso sì, Vito. Ok, eh, provo ad andare in presentazione, ma anche se non va in modalità presentazione non fa niente. È entrato in modalità presentazione? Sì. Okay, allora, so uh, I will try to be as uh, short as possible with uh, uh, my part of the present of the webinar. My presentation is uh, will be um, a resume of uh, novel disease by astroviruses in animals. So here there is a short, uh, uh, just, a, just a screenshot of the uh, whole, whole classification of the uh, astroviruses of 2007. Then uh, in 2011, we had uh, a new classification, but this classification uh, is uh, still, uh, still not uh, been uh, updated as far. Um, uh, this is a problem because uh, a, a, a huge, a massive number of novel astroviruses has been discovered in the wild. So um, the, um, these viruses are so diverse and they are uh, challenge, challenging heavily the um, classification. So this is a structure of astroviruses, and this is the peak, an electron microscopy uh, picture. And uh, uh, let's go to the topic. Uh, astrovirus infection are associated with enteritis in several animal species, uh, with nephritis in chickens and hepatitis in ducks, with neurological disease in humans, mink, cows, sheep, and pigs, And uh, also, uh, they have been associated with respiratory disease uh, in uh, some animals, uh, uh, including pigs. So the, the first evidence of uh, strange astrovirus strains uh, dates back to 2004. Um, there was a paper uh, study describing the appearance, the onset of a new disease in means in um, And this uh, uh, disease was first observed in Denmark, and then in uh, Sweden and uh, Finland, and then again in Denmark. Uh, in the, it was in Turkey affecting uh, uh, dozens of farms in Sweden and Denmark. And uh, the, the cases were uh, uh, appearing uh, sporadically, one new case per day, in farms with dozens of kids during the reproductive season with low morbidity. So these, uh, um, the, the mink kits were showing uh, um, a central nervous system signs, and uh, it was uh, um, uh, used the term shaking because it was uh, observed uh, as light tremors uh, and intermittent phasers in the animals. And uh, at the terminal stage, the affected means were paraplegic and uh, very, very sensitive to noise. So this was a, a strange disease and they were making attempt to understand. They were uh, um, uh, making a examination, histological examination. They were finding evidence of non suppurative encephalitis. And uh, where they were testing, they were screening the samples with uh, a wide panel, diagnostic panels, but they were not finding anything. And they, uh, but when uh, they were uh, infecting, they were doing animal experiments, they were able to uh, reproduce the disease uh, in uh, uh, very young uh, mink kids. 
And these were the lesions. In particular, uh, there, there is perivascular scuffing and uh, uh, cuffing, and there is a, um, um, a, a neuronal degeneration with uh, neuronal uh, phagia. And uh, um, the, uh, this is in, indicated by arrows. So uh, uh, a couple of years later, in 2010, the mystery was uh, um, resolved. And uh, using NGS technology, they uh, discovered uh, uh, astrovirus RNA in the tissues of these animals. So they, are, they understood that the disease was caused by astrovirus. And this is interesting because in, this is the, basically the same time as the discovery of uh, uh, encephalitis in humans by uh, the animal-like astrovirus uh, uh, way. So this uh, uh, group of viruses, as uh, Susanna has uh, told uh, earlier in this uh, webinar, were uh, different from the classical uh, human astroviruses. So, um, uh, after this, in 2013, uh, a, a new interesting data was reported in the literature. There was uh, the, the description of uh, uh, um, a CNS disease in, uh, 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 in Qatar. Uh, we must say that uh, uh, CNS disease uh, um, has long, uh, long been uh, known in bovines. Uh, has uh, uh, in the form of sporadic case of uh, meningoencephalitis or SBE. Not, uh, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to make confusion with BSE. So SBE, sporadic bovine encephalitis. And uh, in the 2013, uh, there was the first description of uh, uh, an association of astrovirus in cattle with uh, um, CNS disease. And uh, this was uh, a young animal from uh, Mexico found in Northern California with lateral recumbency, uh, opistotonus, and extension of limbs. And it was possible to observe uh, astrovirus in uh, uh, transmission electron microscopy in the tissues of the animals. And to it, it, uh, they were able to demonstrate the presence of uh, astrovirus RNA in the, uh, in the brain of the animal. So um, the, the genome of the, a new astrovirus was reconstructed, the strain neuro S1. And uh, uh, when uh, uh, screening uh, retrospectively uh, brain tissues from animals uh, collected uh, uh, in a collection of samples available at the university, they uh, found out that uh, additional uh, animals were uh, positive for this uh, new virus. And uh, this is the distribution of the lesions in the uh, in the first animal, in the uh, in the um, the bovine in the Mexican uh, cow, and uh, um, the the lesions were again similar to what we have seen before in the mink. We have uh, um, uh, uh, perivascular cuffs, uh, the generation of uh, uh, a necrosis of the neurons. And uh, uh, we have also um, 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 neuronophagia. Uh, this uh, um, uh, this uh, finding was uh, uh, confirmed one year later in a study in Switzerland. They, uh, again, they were able to detect astrovirus RNA in, uh, in cattle. And uh, a similar study thus far have been done and uh, that have reported these uh, astrovirus, uh, the presence of astroviruses in the uh, in the cattle in Germany, in Canada, U Uruguay, Japan, and uh, uh, recently in Italy. And uh, by screening a collection of archival samples of cattle with uh, SBE. In Switzerland, they were uh, uh, able to demonstrate that the virus was already present in the 60s. So this is an old disease that, uh, uh, that remained previously undiagnosed and that has been discovered only recently. 
So uh, in 2016, a different strain, CH15, was uh, discovered uh, again in Switzerland. And uh, they rescreened uh, the archival collection of samples and they found out an additional uh, sample positive with this virus. And uh, next, moving to uh, small ruminants, they were all also able to find the virus in the, the brain tissues of the sheep. And uh, here we can see a very detailed uh, phylogenetic uh, tree um, uh, with uh, the reconstruction of the, all these uh, neurovirulent strains. And uh, the ovine strain is involved. And also you can see the asterisks are indicating neurovirulent strains. And uh, again, this uh, finding was confirmed in a study in the uh, UK and uh, in uh, another study in uh, Switzerland. So uh, the, the, um, the possibility of astrovirus to, uh, to cause uh, encephalitis in uh, sheep has been demonstrated repeatedly. So uh, again, the Switzerland group uh, was very active on this topic, also was able to find uh, uh, an astrovirus, uh, CH18, in the, the brain tissues of uh, uh, a mass of with progressive neurological disease. Uh, it was an animal dying in uh, 1982, so uh, several years ago. They had archival samples that they were uh, um, screening. And uh, uh, moving next to pigs, uh, astrovirus as a possible cause of uh, uh, neurological disease has been uh, uh, already um, uh, hypothesized, uh, demonstrated uh, in uh, 2014 by a Swedish group. They found out some uh, astrovirus sequence uh, in the tissues of the uh, animals with neurological uh, sign. And uh, evidence for neurological disease in pigs uh, was uh, um, already described in the 20s. And they were using the term dancing pigs because of the uh, clinical signs. Uh, CNS disease uh, was uh, even reproduced by inoculation of pregnant cells with tissues of affected piglets. And was, uh, this uh, uh, um, peculiar form was uh, suspected to have an infectious origin. And um, in 2017, uh, there was an um, outstanding paper by an Hungarian group. They described outbreaks of meningoencephalitis. And uh, um, this was uh, occurring in 25 to 35 days old domestic pigs, uh, mostly one week after weaning. And uh, uh, about 30 to 40 pigs monthly, uh, and up to 80 in the autumn and winter were uh, uh, affected by this uh, uh, disease. And they were able to, um, to find the, the virus in uh, uh, porcine astrovirus type 3 virus. Uh, then they found, that, so they were able to demonstrate an association between the disease and the presence of the virus. And this uh, uh, finding was also has been also reported in the same year in a study in the uh, US. And uh, they were also able to detect an astrovirus step 3. So uh, these are the clinical signs. I hope uh, the, the video is uh, starting. OK. I will skip the video. I'm sorry. I was able to, I was uh, hoping that it could work. But um, so let's go to the, to the final part of the uh, presentation. So an interesting question is, uh, where do human uh, well-like viruses uh, come from? So uh, the, the same term, animal-like viruses, uh, animal-like astroviruses, is suggesting that these viruses can uh, come from an animal source. It is not clear if uh, this is a bottleneck event. So once it happens, then the virus is uh, uh, circulating uh, continuously in the human population. Or it is a, a series of spillover events that are repeating over time. Uh, from uh, 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 an unidentified animal source. So uh, this uh, uh, figure has been, uh, already been shown by Susanna, so I will skip. And uh, um, 
I will, uh, uh, I just uh, uh, invite you to read this uh, interesting review if you want to read something more on the topic. This has been written and published a couple of years ago by Gabor Rother. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, beyond uh, the um, association with, between uh, astrovirus and encephali encephalitis, the, there is evidence that astrovirus are also able to cause other clinical uh, disease, other clinical forms. Here we have a study pub uh, recently published on emerging infectious disease. And uh, they, they are describing the, uh, the presence of uh, astrovirus in white-tailed deer uh, with respiratory uh, disease, respiratory signs. This is uh, um, uh, very interesting because this has been also described in uh, pigs. Uh, they, um, there is a report of uh, porcine astrovirus type 4 from uh, nasal swabs of pigs with acute respiratory disease. So it's like, uh, it is like this, this uh, finding are not uh, um, isolated, but they can be uh, uh, observed in uh, several animal species. And also there is some literature on the presence, on the, on the possibility that uh, um, of uh, uh, astroviruses causing respiratory disease in humans. Also, uh, another very interesting uh, uh, manuscript I found out uh, was the, the discovery of novel uh, astroviruses in uh, mon monkeys in China. And uh, when analyzing the virus, so this was very similar to amphibian astrovirus. So here we have a new group of uh, astroviruses, and then, then we go back to the, my first uh, uh, initial uh, claims that we, we need to have an update of astrovirus classification. So you see that these viruses are, um, are full of uh, surprises for us. And uh, uh, to conclude, uh, this uh, um, uh, massive genetic diversity of astroviruses is a, a big challenge for the classification. Too many, there are too many virus strains. Um, uh, uh, there are several studies reporting uh, uh, a number of new viruses in bats, including astroviruses. Uh, astroviruses have long been considered minor enteric pathogens, and we, always, we often use the term neglected enteric pathogens. However, they are able to trigger a variety of clinical forms in humans and animals. So these viruses will never end, surprising us. And uh, uh, finally, just a joke, uh, a small context. What happens when an hepatitis E virus dates an astrovirus? And uh, uh, the answer is that we have uh, a, a novel astrovirus called Bastrovirus. And this is a new virus that is a genetic mix between uh, hepatitis E virus and uh, uh, astrovirus. And if you do a phylogenetic analysis using the ORF2 genes, these viruses are barely distinguishable from uh, uh, other uh, mammalian astroviruses. So it is uh, very, very interesting that we have a recombination between the two distinct virus, virus, viral families. And this is something unique that uh, uh, does, uh, in my knowledge, has been uh, rarely described in virology. Okay, I have finished. I hope I've been, uh, I've been uh, able to, to be as quick as possible. And, and I, uh, I go back to the uh, direct. Okay, so I think we can uh, uh, open, uh, we can leave the space to the, uh, we can leave uh, some, uh, um, Need for the, the questions. Sì, io direi che possono essere scritte anche in italiano le domande. Sì. You can write in Italian or English if you prefer. So just to, to break the ice, since I was uh, hinting to the association of uh, um, uh, respiratory uh, astrovirus with respiratory disease. I would like to ask uh, Susanna uh, something because I read that there was a, there is some anecdotal uh, study of uh, uh, animal-like virus in uh, 
uh, in a child with uh, respiratory disease. And uh, also there is a, a study in epidemiological investigations. They were hunting for these viruses in the uh, respiratory samples. So do you think that these viruses maybe are not, uh, the, are, can be more respiratory viruses than enteric viruses in humans? Well, that's a good question, and, and I don't know the answer. It is true that the, the viruses have been isolated from, from patients in the, in the nasopharyngeal uh, um, site, but uh, it's also true that other viruses were also present in these samples, so it's really difficult to associate the, the astroviruses with the disease. Um, I also know that in the in the mice uh, in the mouse model, the, the the animals can be infected orally, and the virus mainly replicates in the intestine. But they have also detected viral replication, a low level of viral replication in the lungs of mice. So whether these uh, viruses that replicate in lungs ha have uh, just uh, spread from the intestinal to the lungs or whether they have just entered through the oropharyngeal mucosa and then spread to the lungs. Uh, this, I, I don't know, but it's really in interesting to confirm whether, per first to confirm whether the virus can replicate in human lungs and, and then uh, more case control studies should be performed to confirm the association with disease especially if you find other viruses there. I don't know if you can tell for sure that, that the astrovirus are, are causing the, the clinical symptoms. Okay, thank you. While we wait for the answer from the students, I have another answer that is half for you and half for Susan and half for uh, Mona. So the question is, uh, um, uh, I know that uh, Simona there um, has just finished uh, uh, writing a study on uh, uh, um, um, the result of syndromic uh, uh, surveillance in uh, uh, pediatric uh, acute gastroenteritis, and uh, they found out uh, a lot of uh, uh, a number of uh, um, uh, mixed infections, multiple infections. And also, the, it was curious that the, the, um, a very common uh, 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 association was uh, rotavirus with astrovirus. So, uh, listening to your hypothesis, your um, uh, that the um, astrovirus replication can uh, facilitate uh, uh, the, the, the replication of other viruses, I would. I would uh, Thinking maybe this would be the uh, one of the reasons. So, so Simona, I I after uh, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just in our experience, I we just made the, the different hypotheses about the data we found just because uh, using uh, some uh, um, syndromic panels, but also using our um, real-time um, tools, we found a very high prevalence of uh, co-infection um, with two or more viruses, also three viruses together. And astrovirus is uh, one of the most viruses involved in co-infection. This was a, 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 a certain data we found. And another important data we found was that the viral load of astrovirus viruses was quite higher than the other one. So I would like also to listen by Susanna if there is a, a, um, an, a, an information about the pathogenesis of, of this. Uh, if uh, astrovirus can help another virus to be uh, clinically um, uh, uh, of impact or if they just share the same route of transmission so they are all together in the gut of the patients. Yeah, so <laughs> also a very different, difficult question. I think there's no uh, definite answer. 
uh, what it's true, and we also observe this, is that if you use uh, highly sensitive methods for the screening, the more sensitive the method, the more viruses you will find mm -hmm. there, and the more complicated will be to interpret the results. Uh, so we also found many, many co-infections with of astroviruses with other enteric pathogens in the clinical samples. And we also analyzed whether the titer correlated with uh, symptoms, uh, but we didn't find any clear association. Uh, and I also think that when you try to correlate viral titers with disease, many other factors can also play a role. The date of sampling in relationship to the symptoms and the onset of symptoms, um, the uh, sampling itself. So you only analyze a very, very small amount of uh, feces from the person. So uh, you are making a bias when you sample. Uh, so it's very, very hard to make sure that you are getting data that allow you to correlate with that disease. Uh, and there's also one thing is the viral titer. The other thing is the amount of viruses that the patient is producing and generating. Maybe the virus is not that concentrated, but when you look at the total numbers, the total numbers are much higher. Uh, so there are many factors that are, are playing a role here. But according to the data from, uh, from mice, I would not be surprised to, to see that something similar would happen in the human intestine and the human gut. Uh, maybe the astrovirus replication would affect the efficiency of replication of other enteric viruses as well. I don't know which would be the direction, whether it would enhance or limit the replication of other viruses, but I would not be surprised to see an interaction between them. But I don't have any more answers to that. Thank you. OK, um, I think there are uh, some questions from the students. Yes, we have two questions. Uh, first, um, if there are if there are reports about the receptor shared between the human astrovirus and animals astrovirus, except for the murine case. Maybe for Susanna. Mm, well, I, as far as I know, the receptor has not been uh, no. completely characterized. So I would say that there are no no reports on on animal and human viruses sharing uh, a common receptor. And there's also the debate whether different uh, serotypes of classical astroviruses are going to use the same receptor. So I think there's a lack of information here. OK. And another question about the strange way thing uh, who generated the virus. <laughs> if each these students is interesting and uh, we want to know when and uh, where was it isolated and how much is this virus infectious? Okay, I must say that uh, thus far this, vi this uh, novel virus has been discovered in uh, several animal species including bats, but also in humans, but they have not been able to find any association with the disease uh, thus far. And I can say that uh, as the most of the uh, uh, new viruses discovered with the uh, NGS, sequencing dependent techniques with uh, metagenomic uh, studies, these viruses are still old. So we don't, there is a very scant information on this. I don't know if uh, Susanna has a, uh, heard about these viruses, so they have already started doing some studies in, in their labs. No, we, we know that we know the publication, but we haven't screened for these viruses yet. But, but it's also uh, interesting and curious is that 
uh, when they uh, define develop uh, define the crystal structure of the capsid of astroviruses, it's also surprising that although the amino acid sequence is uh, distant from the amino acid sequence of the hepatitis E capsid, the uh, conformation and the shape and the structure uh, is quite similar. So probably they share some features uh, regarding tropism or um, stability or something that could help co-infection of the same cell to occur and allow the recombination between a hepatitis E virus and an astrovirus. But yeah, it's a very interesting virus. And uh, the, the problem here is that it's the same. It, there's not, there are not enough astrovirus labs <laughs> that are able to study all the, and address all the questions that, that uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Even if now with the fact that uh, the, there was this association with neurological disease, the, the, these viruses have gained a, a new attention uh, mm -hmm. globally, so, unless until the appearance of the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's the scene for everybody. <laughs> but the zoonotic potential is also very high for astrovirus, and, and I also think that it's interesting to understand whether the spillovers occur uh, for sure, how often and w which are the reservoirs, the animal reservoirs where we get the, the viruses from, for astroviruses as well. And I think this may also, uh, in the one health world that we are uh, getting to, will be a little bit uh, important to study. Okay, are uh, other questions? Uh, uh, I don't know, Vito, if there are questions in uh, Teams. Uh, I am in connection with uh, the staff, uh, with John Vito, and uh, I'm, I'm just uh, asking him. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the wild, I have uh, another question. Um, do you see that uh, based on the uh, neuro, uh, neurotrophic potential, um, these viruses should be attentioned, uh, should be uh, paid attention in uh, some hospital wards where we have uh, uh, immunosuppressive patients uh, um, with longer, long term uh, care assistance. You mean at the clinical uh, setting? Yeah. Yes, I think that, that uh, the astrovirus screening should be uh, introduced and uh, that uh, assays should be developed to be able to detect the viruses in uh, CSF specimens and also stool specimens of certain patients uh, that may have neurological um, clinical symptoms, but uh, as I said, the the reports are very very uh, few, <laughs> and sometimes some of the samples have turned out to be negative for by real time PCR assays, and NGS uh, has been uh, required there. So I don't know how easy easily it can be to yeah. implement these techniques mm -hmm. routinely. This is a concern. I think we should do it, but uh, I don't know the logistic and practical issues that need to be solved first. A uh, question for Simona. Simona, are you hunting for these uh, animal-like viruses in uh, your labs? No, unfortunately, no. But uh, we would like to to start to study also these viruses and we are looking for uh, a real-time PCR able to see these different viruses in, uh, in our samples. So yes, we hope to have new data in the, in the next future. Because the other problem is, Susanna, that they are uh, genetically diverse, so you have to use uh, uh, more uh, 
uh, essays to, to try to cover all the, the genetic types? Yeah, so uh, there is no single universal real-time assay that will detect all of them, I think, uh, with a good uh, performance. So in our lab, what we do is we use uh, six different uh, real-time assays. We combine them two by two. So uh, in the end, it's, uh, it is three duplex RT-PCR assays that we run, but we have to run this for each sample. So uh, this is a lot of work and a lot of, uh, of money uh, for the screening. Uh, yes. I had a question from a, a, a colleague, a, a virologist from an um, Italian colleague. And the question is, uh, if there is a, uh, <laughs> coming back to the, to the strange uh, wedding, uh, uh, hepatitis E virus and uh, astrovirus, so with bastrovirus. So the question is, uh, if there is uh, any association between uh, human hepatitis virus prevalence distribution and this virus, I think that the, the answer is that we don't, do not know. Is it correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer yet. I think it's not studied. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it is. Uh, nobody was thinking to, to do such uh, such an investigation, such an association. Okay. Um, so if uh, I think that we have. Uh, uh, we don't have other questions from the students, so uh, um, uh, now about so we are uh, five minutes after eighteen, so we have uh, exceeded the, the the time window for this uh, webinar. <laughs> we are taking advantage of some extra minutes, and so uh, to. Uh, before uh, finishing, I just want to give you words if you want to uh, say something more. Um, uh, one short sentence, one short message. Uh, so starting from uh, Susanna. Uh, what, uh, I did not understand, so... Uh, a one shot sequence. A one shot sequence. Uh, sequence. Uh, sorry, one shot claim, one shot uh, uh, sentence to uh, before concluding. Okay, no, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for the invitation and the uh, uh, helpful discussion on astroviruses. It's also oh. always interesting. To me, the astroviruses are like my little because I started studying virology with them and I keep still I still keep studying them now so it's been a pleasure to follow the field over the years so I just wanted to uh, encourage the students to make questions and try to answer them and uh, I don't know if all of them are would be interested in doing research but to encourage them to the to perform some research uh, uh, work, some time to test whether they they enjoy and they like it. It's difficult to get funding, but it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I just want to encourage them to. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I must say it was my uh, it was a, several years I had uh, the idea of uh, of organizing something like this because I think that this uh, topic is a uh, it's really interesting, uh, yet if uh, there are other diseases, other pathogens that are more famous, more more relevant sometimes, but uh, I, I think that uh, it deserved a big moment uh, to, uh, to do some reflection, some, some uh, uh, conversation on this. And so I put the same question to Simona, if there is a, a one-shot sentence uh, <laughs> that you would like to say to yes. I would like to thank you so much and uh, also to give me the opportunity to, to, meet, uh, to meet Susanna and uh, I would like just to tell that all virus uh, device to be studied does uh, all place a uh, device to be visited. So there is not a, a, a virus which is most important than another one because each virus could help us to understand maybe also the other one. 
So just this. <laughs> yes, I agree. So uh, thank you, Simona. And I also want to thank uh, uh, Maria Laura for uh, her presence, for uh, helping us. And just the conclusive, uh, so uh, Maria Laura, do you want to say something to close? Yes, um, just to thank uh, the public uh, students. Uh, uh, I see also PhD students, undergraduate, all the colleagues uh, who attended this uh, interesting uh, lecture. Thank you very much. And but Vito, we can go to prepare the next webinar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a good idea. And uh, so, Daniela, do you want to say something? Sì, voglio semplicemente ringraziarvi, è stato un seminario molto interessante. Ricordo a tutti che è possibile fruirne anche dopo che sarà finita la diretta e probabilmente ci saranno anche i sottotitoli e spero che sia una esperienza ripetibile con altri argomenti. Grazie a voi. Ok, so, bye bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Finito! Eh, viva! <laughs> <laughs>